starting off this countdown, we have Gas Mask Island. About 110 miles south of Tokyo, Japan, there's a small island located in an area of the Pacific Ocean known as the Devil Sea. The island is called Miyakejima, otherwise known as Gas Mask Island. Now, why is it called Gas Mask Island? Well, this island is home to Mount Oyama, a very active volcano that emits poisonous sulfuric gas. So all of the residents have to carry gas masks with them all the time, just in case these gas levels rise unexpectedly. I honestly don't know why anyone would live there, like it's super deadly. And any photo taken there looks super apocalyptic, like this one. In fact, in 1953, the residents were evacuated from the island because the gas levels were dangerously high. But in 2005, they returned back to the island. They just now have to carry with them gas masks everywhere they go. And you thought wearing medical masks were bad, okay? Imagine wearing a gas mask. In our ninth spot, we have the shell-shocked soldier. This photo was taken back in 1916 during World War I. You might have seen this video before because it went viral on the internet since the soldier in the photo is suffering from shell shock, hence his facial expression. Upon researching, it seems like this soldier is Private Robert Lindsay Rogers. On the morning of September 16th, 1916, he was in a trench cleaning his rifle when he was hit in the neck by a sniper fire. Thankfully, he survived, but he was stuck laying in the trenches just bleeding out waiting to be rescued. It's thought that this photo was taken when people came to his rescue. This photo is just so disturbing knowing the horrors he went through and saw. But we have the giant Gippsland earthworm. If you don't like insects or creepy crawlies then this photo is definitely one you don't want to see. This is a giant earthworm that can be found in Australia. Of course, of course it's from Australia. It is roughly one meter long, but some have reached three meters, which is 9.8 feet, which is way too big. This thing is massive. On top of that, it weighs about 200 grams and have about 300 to 400 body segments. I'm sorry, but that's not a worm. That's a snake. Like, look how big it is. I am not okay with that. But also think about the big fish that you can catch with that worm. Honestly, why is it so big? Earthworms are meant to be tiny little creatures, not massive creatures like this one. Moving on to number seven, we have Chuck E. Cheese. Wanna know what's scarier than Chuck E. Cheese? Apocalyptic Chuck E. Cheese. So this photo was taken at a landfill and someone found the remains of an old Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. Apparently, whenever a Chuck E. Cheese location closes, everything has to be destroyed and that's left up to the employees. So in this case, they did a pretty poor job at destroying Chucky. They do this so that collectors don't end up trash diving and getting their hands on these animatronics and then reselling them. Anyways, this one was found in landfill and it's absolutely terrifying. Like imagine that thing turning on and blinking its big beady eyes at you. No, thank you. Coming in at number six, we have the hospital monitor. According to the person that took this photo, they're a nurse at a hospital. One night, they saw this dark figure looming over a patient's bed. They immediately snapped a photo of it and went to go check in on the patient. Sadly, after capturing that demon figure thing on camera, the patient passed away shortly afterwards. So they're convinced that that was a demon and it was there to collect the soul of the patient that was passing away or it was the soul leaving the body of the patient. Either way, it looks terrifying and uh, malicious. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Chernobyl. This photo was taken in 1996 by a man named Artur Korniev, who is also seen in the photo. This was taken after the Chernobyl disaster. Pictured there is something referred to as the elephant's foot, a large mass of black corium. It's given its name because it's shaped sort of like an elephant's foot. Now this thing, is deadly. It emits high levels of radiation. Anyone exposed to it for minutes could die from radiation poisoning. But that didn't scare Artur away. In fact, the radiation was so strong that it affected the photos he took. That's why the photo looks grainy and kind of weird. It literally caused the film to develop strangely. Now what's shocking is that this man never passed away from radiation poisoning, although he has spent the most amount of time in close proximity with the elephant's foot. 
In our fourth spot, we have the nursing home. According to Reddit user 13th Safe, one night, something paranormal was happening at the nursing home where her mom worked at. A number of staff and residents witnessed doors opening and closing by themselves. Others saw call lights turning on and off by themselves in rooms where no one was. This photo was taken in the hospital 15 minutes after a patient passed away. The Reddit user believes that this is the soul of the person that passed away, or it's the Grim Reaper there to collect souls. So it's quite terrifying that they managed to capture this on camera. Moving on to number three, we have the ghost in the back. This next photo was taken in 1943 in Hungary. It was uploaded by a man named Zagedi Gayonji. He claims that back in the day, his father took this picture of his mother. Upon reviewing it, they saw a ghost of a girl standing in the background. The girl had no arms or face. So they believe that this is a demon or something else evil. Now, this photo was taken on an old Polaroid camera. A lot of people thought that the photo was fake or edited, but he even uploaded the original small Polaroid as proof that, you know, that's the way that the photo developed, which makes it that much more terrifying. She straight up looks like a ghost. Coming in at number two, we have the school haunting. This story and photo was posted on Reddit by the user in the lion's mane. According to him, he's never been a believer in the paranormal until he had his own chilling experience and saw a real photo of a ghost. So he grew up in a small rural town. A couple years ago, the town was tearing down an old elementary school. A guy then went to the dilapidated school and decided to take some photos with his cell phone. And he managed to capture a ghost in one of the photos. Once the Reddit user saw this photo, it immediately changed his mind about ghosts and the paranormal. I mean, it's a terrifying photo. You can clearly see that there's a ghost of a boy standing there. Plus, he adds on that his town is super small and he doubts anyone there knows how to make fake pictures. So it's really crazy. Creepy. And in our number one spot, we have Mademoiselle Blanche Monet. This is a sad, real story of a woman who was locked in her room for 25 years by her mother. So in 1875, a 25-year-old woman named Mademoiselle Blanche Monet fell in love with an older lawyer and planned to marry him. But her mother deeply disproved. She didn't want her daughter marrying him. So she locked her away until she changed her mind. As a result, she was locked away in a room for 25 years. That was until someone found out that she was being locked away and called the authorities. When they came to her rescue, they were deeply disturbed. She was super gaunt looking from being malnourished. She also hadn't seen the light of day for years and her room was covered in feces and bugs. Her mother was arrested and placed into prison for her terrible crime. In our number 10 spot today, we have John Lennon. Of course, we all know John Lennon as one part of the Beatles who went on after they disbanded to have a very successful solo career. Lennon was not only a musician, but also a peace activist who was strongly anti-war. He was not afraid to display his activism and held a two-week anti-war demonstration. There was a period of three years where the Nixon administration was trying to have him deported for his criticism against the Vietnam War. On December 8th, 1980, Lennon was leaving the Dakota apartment complex when he was stopped by a man named Mark David Chapman. Lennon signed an autograph for Mark, which is what is happening in this photo, and then Lennon went on his way. Little did he know, Mark was going to shoot him later that night. Once Lennon returned to the apartment complex, Mark was there waiting for him to commit his crime. Mark has said he did it mostly for the attention, which is so horrifying, but Mark is also a very religious man who explained that Lennon once saying that the Beatles were more famous than Jesus is what really pushed him to commit this crime. It is very crazy that this photo was captured when Lennon was being kind to who he thought was a fan and no one could have predicted what would happen just a few hours later. In our number nine spot today, we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This photo comes from 1971 during the Stanford Prison Experiment. For those of you who aren't familiar with this experiment, it started on August 14th, 1971 and was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. The experiment took student volunteers and divided them into two groups. 
one group of prisoners and one group of guards, and they placed all of the volunteers into a fake prison that was created for the experiment. The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions with the right amount of power. Basically, it was just to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. I think everyone was shocked with the results. After only six days, the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began absolutely tormenting the prisoners. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of even after such a short time. This photo is definitely reminiscent of that experiment and serves as our reminder. In our number seven spot today, we have the Stanley Hotel. This is a photo of the Stanley Hotel, which is the hotel that inspired the famous Stephen King novel, The Shining. This hotel was under construction in the early 1900s and saw a fateful day in 1911. There was an unexplained explosion that happened in room 217. In the explosion, a chambermaid was seriously injured, but she ended up surviving and actually returning to work. A few years later, she passed away, and ever since her passing, there have been tons of guests who swear they saw her ghost. Guests have said that they have seen her around the halls of the hotel, but the place that gets the most paranormal activity is of course room 217. This is the room where Stephen and his wife stayed for one terrifying night in 1974. Apparently they were actually the only guests in the hotel for this night, which at any other hotel might be cool, but I feel like this is not what you want from a haunted hotel. In our number six spot, today we have the Rothschild Surrealist Ball. The Rothschild family is one of the wealthiest and most powerful families there has ever been. For years and years there have been many rumors swirling about just how powerful and influential they really are, and there are some pretty crazy theories out there. In 1972 the family held a Surrealist Ball, which is where this photo is from. These photos could be potentially very innocent, but there is just something about these elaborate masks coupled with the theories about what this family is really up to that just make it feel very eerie. This party is one of the most legendary there has ever been, and whether or not they really are involved in shady dealings, that still is impressive. In our number five spot today, we have the Salem UFO. On the morning of July 16th, 1952, this photo was captured by Shell Alpert and has stumped people ever since. This photo shows four unidentified objects hovering in the air above Salem. Salem, Massachusetts, and was taken at the Salem Coast Guard Air Station. The objects seem to be above the Winter Island and Cat Cove areas, but there really isn't much more that is known about this strange incident. There were a few theories regarding this photo. One is a camera glitch. Others think it may have just been light reflecting off of the window that the photo was taken through. But of course, there are people who point to similar incidents that happened in the 1950s, and of course believe it is proof of extraterrestrial beings. It is very likely we may never know exactly, but the air of mystery it leaves is definitely kind of cool. In our number four spot today, we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. The volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18, 1980. This photograph comes from photographer Robert Landsberg, who was of course in the area at the time of this eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was located so close to the explosion, he knew that he would be unable to escape this disaster so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course developed and has provided geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number three spot today, we have this burst of joy. You might be looking at this photo wondering how this extremely joyous photo could hold any dark secrets. 
Well, this photo won a Pulitzer Prize, and for a good reason. This photo was captured by Slava Vedder on March 17, 1973, at the Travis Air Force Base in California. The photo shows United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Sturm and his family. This was taken as he was being reunited with his family after five years of being held as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. On October 27, 1967, he was leading a flight of F-105 when he was shot down over Hanoi and held captive until March 14th, 1973. I can't imagine what this must have been like for his family because there was a chance that he could have not come home at all. The girl with her arms wide is his 15 year old daughter, but the look on all of their faces truly captures the pure joy that they are all feeling. In our number two spot today, we have the frozen man of Mount Everest. This photo comes from 1996 and it shows Beck Weathers getting treated after the Mount Everest disaster. The Mount Everest disaster took place on May 10th and 11th in 1996, where there was a blizzard on the mountain that ended up stranding and taking the lives of eight people who were aiming to descend the mountain. Beck was a part of the team who was climbing the mountain on this fateful day and he ended up suffering from snow blindness during the climb. He actually fell into a hypothermic coma because it was so cold and he suffered severe frostbite on his face, hands, and feet. Pretty miraculously, he not only survived, but ended up walking back down to camp in order to get help, where he was then taken by helicopter to receive treatment. He ended up needing his hands, part of his feet, and even his nose amputated, but he survived this whole ordeal, and that is the most important thing. In our number one spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. If you have never heard of the Dyatlov, of pass incident, you better buckle in because it is so terrifying. This photo was taken in February of 1959 as nine young Soviet hikers set out to trek through the Ural Mountains. They had set up camp and sometime during the night, something happened that made them cut their way out of the tent and all flee the site. Leaving in such a rush, they were of course underdressed for the bitterly cold weather and six of them ended up passing away from hypothermia, which is extremely tragic tragic. The other three, however, is where this story takes a frightening turn. Like I mentioned before, no one knows why they fled the tent in the first place, and the last three hikers were found passed away with severe signs of physical trauma that no one could agree on what had caused it. In 2019, the investigation was reopened, and just last year there was a conclusion that a kind of avalanche called a slab avalanche was the cause of these injuries. Regardless of what happened, this whole incident was of course very tragic, but the mystery behind it definitely takes it to a spooky place. Kicking off the list at number 10, the mysterious black tomb. Back in 2018, remains were found by archaeologists in Egypt, and apparently they had never seen the Brendan Fraser classic, The Mummy, because they opened it. Just because, you know, we wanted to see what was inside. They found a massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria, and it hasn't been touched in over 2,000 years, and we still opened it. These guys wore masks because apparently it had an awful smell, you don't say. I left a banana in my locker in high school for winter break once, and honestly, nothing could beat that. That was the worst thing I've ever smelled. Not even a cursed mummy. I don't know, maybe. They opened it and they found three skeletons. Not just one, but three. Nice combo. They also found this brown sewage water just lying there, which I'm sure smelled great. They opened it up two inches and the smell was so foul that the committee that was on the scene, they straight up ran away. It's almost like opening the tomb of a mummy is forbidden and we should never do it again. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said in response to locals freaking out about this that we've opened it and thank God the world has not fallen into darkness. I was the first to put my whole head inside the sarcophagus and here I stand before you, I'm fine. Nice. That was in 2018. How's the world now, Azari? Hmm? Was the mummy juice worth it? Now we're wearing masks every day, not just when we open yucky tombs. Thanks, man. Number eight. Area 51. Remember that Area 51 raid, you know, when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? How did that go again? At least 2,000 people came to a festival in Rachel, Nevada, located near the gates leading to Area 51. Yeah, we could only get so much time off of work. We decided that consequences don't exist. 
power in numbers, I guess. Nice. Love the glitter and spandex. That's good. So we didn't raid Area 51 because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. It wasn't as easy as a hashtag, you know? But why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What was the goal here? Well, these controversial photos show that there's more than meets the eye in this Nevada military base. Located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada, if you wanted to take a look at this place from the skies, say, I don't know, satellite imagery, well, it wasn't until 2018 until those pictures were uncensored. Honestly, when UFOs were on the news recently, I thought that was the end of it. I still don't know how I feel about Area 51, but next time we raid them, let's get more than 30 people wearing flip-flops. Just an idea. Number seven, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island here is home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why? Is there a resort on it? Is there some sort of Bahama Michael Jackson suite that you can't swim up to? No. Located in the Bay of Bengal, North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers from India, and while most islands are shrinking, this one actually grew back in 2004. That's right, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. The inhabitants on this floating cursed island are amongst the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire, yet this tribe has thrived. If we try and get close, they try and drive anybody away. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives simply because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government at this point didn't roll up to the beach and start interrogating locals. Instead, they just made it forbidden to go to completely. And honestly, that's a great call. There's other islands. Just go to center Island. I don't know. Go anywhere else. Number six, Lascaux Caves. There's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin. And for archaeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. Those Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at, and they were created from humans roughly 20,000 years ago, but it's now considered a world heritage site. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there to write Jordan was here in Sharpie, you better think again, because it's not open anymore, and there's a good reason for it. Aside from paintings and clues to humanity's earliest, these caves are home to ancient bones and tools. So it's pretty much an old graveyard as well. It's very haunting. The cave was opened originally to the public in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. You have to be so tender with these ancient pieces of art. The small opening that led to the cave originally was enlarged to make room for visitors and such, but even the change of airflow after that deteriorated some of the paintings. Number five, the Paris Catacombs. As above, so below is an underrated horror film. A team of explorers accidentally go too deep when exploring the Paris Catacombs, and in turn, they have to face their own hell. Well, it's not too far-fetched, it seems. What feels like a never-ending maze, the tunnels under Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. Originally, the tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. See, cemeteries started to fill up, literally. At this point in time, humans weren't too clean. I mean, bodies were literally just laying on the side of the road, and they started to pile up, so the solution was to use these catacombs. These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. And by good use, I mean arguably the scariest basement in the world, full of bones. Number four, Island of the Dolls, Mexico. The Island of the Dolls. Honestly, that already sounds horrible. This island is famous for having dolls or doll parts just spread all about. Now, the islands that surround this one are inhabited. They're fine, but this one is said to be filled with demonic spirits, specifically the spirit of a young girl who drowned there way back. It's like Camp Crystal Lake, but with even more plastic. These dolls are hanging or nailed to trees, and these dolls have to come from somewhere, and they all came from a local resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera. He put up all these doll parts in order to try and ward away those demonic spirits and keep the island bare and just abandoned. Just keep everybody away from this. And you know what? A bunch of doll parts ought to do the trick. To this day, nobody dares to approach the island. They would much rather snap a pick from far away on their canoe, which is a great idea. If it didn't look haunted before, it definitely does now. Great call, Julian, but the doll parts couldn't have just used smudge sticks. Okay. Number three, Pluto's Gate. Also known as the Gate to Hell. Neat. These runes discovered in Turkey back in 1965 are beautiful, but obviously cursed. Historians believe that this site is the ancient city of Hierapolis, and if you're thinking about visiting these eerie runes, well, you better leave the family pet at home. Any animal that enters these ruins meets instant death. Sparrows were tossed in, and then they immediately stopped breathing and dropped. Scientists have figured out the solution, they think, and it's still pretty haunting. They measured the CO2 concentration, and it turns out that while the sun is up, it burns away this gas, but at night, when the temperature drops significantly, because that's what happens when the sun goes away, 
science. The CO2 becomes heavier than air and it creates this deadly gas cloud on the floor. And then when the sun rises back up again, the concentration of CO2 hits 35%. So now it's deadly enough for animals and even humans. Just stay away from anything called the gates of hell. There's a start. I don't know. We could have figured this out way sooner. Number two, the Svalbard vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And some of my favorites always have a similar theme. They always have this post-apocalyptic feel. There's like shelters with survivors or vaults. It's stressful, but engaging. In real life, we have a global seed vault and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. Sounds scary and it looks scary too. This is where humans are storing food crops. It contains 100 million seeds. So if the earth all of a sudden gets wiped out or even if all the ice melts, this vault will still be good to go. It's built high enough on a mountain so it won't drown. All that water that's just flooded the rest of humanity, well, ideally it'll regrow the earth. Sounds like a fun, cute way to get humans to think about the future, but I'm kind of concerned here. Is there something we don't know? Is there an asteroid on the way? Why is everybody involved in this so soon? Are we in a fight? Number one, tomb KV-55. Okay, we talked about a creepy tomb. Now we gotta finish with another creepy tomb. Located in the Valley of Kings in Egypt, tomb 55, otherwise known as KV-55, was discovered by Edward Ayrton back in 1907. And the reason we call this tomb by a number rather than, you know, a name or a king is because we really don't know who or what is inside. Even the sarcophagus, we're like, ugh, bones, definitely bones. We don't know about this one at all. Even the walls inside, they aren't like other tombs covered in ancient hieroglyphs, tipping their reader off on the noble history of the king that lies before them, here there's nothing. The only hint that remains here is one hieroglyph and it translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Sick. Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out of that tomb. Usually with these ancient Egyptians, it's the opposite. It's made so that grave robbers can't get in. The description for whoever's inside the tomb has also been destroyed. So we literally have no idea who or what is in KV-55. Number 10, Surtsey Island. On part one of this list, we mentioned the global seed vaults. Well, for part two, we need to mention the island where seeds are forbidden. In fact, any human activity is forbidden. This island is also pretty new. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963 and scientists are using the fresh face of land to study what it looks like to, well, not have a Starbucks. They're studying ecosystems without any human interference, which I think is really creepy, but also quite interesting. Scientists studying the land here have to just follow one rule. And that rule is no seeds. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like, obviously. One time a scientist had to go number two and in turn, he accidentally grew a tomato plant. He pooped a tomato plant out. Not really. There was a seed somewhere in there. That would be painful. They acted fast and got rid of the plant in order to not interfere with their study. But like, what a weird job. Guy can't even take a sh at work. How stressful is that? Number nine, the Forbidden City. Built all the way back in 1420, around the time of the Ming Dynasty, the Forbidden City is said to be extremely haunted, aside from being the largest ancient palatial structure on the planet. Located in Beijing, China, it's one of the five most important palaces in the world. It was the Imperial Palace of China from 1420 to 1912. More than 24 emperors lived here in this massive city that took 1 million workers 14 years to build. Inside the city, there's around 980 buildings, and there's roughly 8,000 rooms. It's a lot of rooms to haunt, really, ghost paradise. It was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987, but come 2000, a Starbucks was built on the land. Yeah, the classic, look at how beautiful this landmark is, let's open up a gift shop scenario. By the time 2007 came along, there was enough outrage to get officials to close said Starbucks. No more venti lattes for you, Sarah, sorry. Number eight, the Gates of Guinea or he gates of Guinea, as I wrote. The souls of the dead have to go somewhere and depending on your beliefs, that somewhere could be either really beautiful and peaceful or absolutely terrifying. In the world of voodoo, that place is an underworld called the gates of Guinea. And here's the front door, come on in. Awesome, take your shoes off. Located in Louisiana, this tomb, that of voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, is apparently the entrance to these deep waters, this twilight realm. And some voodoo followers try and open these gates to access the souls of the deep. Don't play Pokemon Go here, do not. You don't wanna do that. Leave the Poliwog at home, okay? He's a trap, you don't need him. Number seven, Mount Osor. Mount Osor is not the name of just one singular mountain, but instead it's an entire mountainous range. Translating to Mount Fear, 
cool. This area is known as the entrance to the afterlife because it features all the geographical elements that are similar to the Japanese Buddhist descriptions of paradise and hell. So not only is this area home to eight symbolic mountain tops, but also a lake with acidic water that only one species of fish can survive in. We got acid fish, come on in, grab a canoe. There's also nothing but bear pits full of vipers. Not an ideal spot to take your family camping, that's for sure. Beyond this mountain range, there's even a river that's known as the border between earth and hell. This is where each and every soul must cross in order to reach the afterlife. If I'm somehow selling you on this idea and you want to take a trip up to Viper Lane, when you get there you'd find statues and offerings along the banks of this river which are intended to help the past souls find their way during this journey because it's definitely not good if the souls get lost because you don't want to even know where you end up. Getting lost in a journey to the afterlife? No man, I don't keep me on track. Ways. Thank you. Every year from July 22nd to 24th, those wanting to communicate with the dead will head to this temple located here to speak with spiritual mediums known as the Itako. So if you're feeling like spicing up your weekend, go gamble with souls of the dead. Have fun. Text us when you get there. And back. Number six, Ghost City. Fengdu is located in China and it's often referred to as the city of ghosts. For a long time, it was believed that this is where the dead stop by on their way to the afterlife. And it is here where they must pass three tests in order to get there three tests. It's a lot of tests right after you die. The first one is for the newly departed souls who must cross over the bridge of helplessness. Sounds like a good bridge, better than the bridge to Terabithia, which is meant to judge their virtue. Okay, so there's demons here who judge whether the soul is good or bad, and the ones who are good can pass while the bad ones are pushed into the water below. Imagine a demon pushing you into the water. It's worse than getting pushed in at a pool party. The ones who pass that first test go on to the ghost torturing pass, where they stand in front of the ruler of the underworld. If they pass that judgment test, then the third and final trial takes place at the Tianzi Palace where they will stand on a certain stone for one minute, also on one leg. For three minutes they have to do this. This is where hot yoga comes in handy. Only a good soul can do this, apparently. If you lose your balance, like I just did back there, maybe you're not wearing your minimal runners and you're wearing Tim's, or maybe you're just condemned to hell. Either one. Fengdu also has many temples and shrines which hold paintings and sculptures that represent people in the underworld. So go take a look at the oldest, awfulest selfie on the planet, that's for sure. Go take a look at some old demon art, have fun. Number five, Huska Castle. Located north of Prague in the Czech Republic, Huska Castle is supposedly built over a bottomless hole that leads directly to, you guessed it, Hell. Legend says the 13th century king Ottokar II offered a pardon to any prisoner who was willing to get lowered into this hole and live to talk about it. What a deal! The first prisoner, when they were lowered into that pit, they only lasted 30 seconds before they started screaming. Legend has it that when he was brought back up, his hair turned white and he'd aged a great amount. That's a lot of stress in 30 seconds. What he saw, however, was also pretty intense and it kind of explains it. He saw these half human, half demon type creatures flying around with scaly wings. Awesome, that's terrifying. The castle was built over the hole without a water source because it wasn't initially meant to be used by humans. Instead, it was only built for demons, should they rise from the mysterious hole. That way they can get out. God love these demons, you know? You don't want them trapped there for too long. It's a lot of noise, a lot of complaints, a lot of pollution. <laughs> Number four, Nihua Island. Located in Hawaii, this island has not yet turned into a resort either. What do you know? In fact, the population of this island is a whopping 170, also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since hence the small population. Thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit these islands and a ban was then put in place. So now you couldn't leave nor enter the island. Nobody got sick, which is great, but now if you want to enter this island, you need to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're rich, even if you're loaded, you can't just buy your way onto the island. So for now, we'll just zoom in on Google Earth. Bird's eye view for the win. It's a nice island. It's like a moon shape. It's good. Number three, Island Moor, Scotland. What better island to visit than one with nobody on it? gonna be pretty quiet. In the early 1900s, a ship was heading to the Flannan Islands, completely uninhabited, but on the ship we had Captain James Harvey and Joseph Moore. They were heading there to watch the lighthouse, but upon arrival, nobody greeted them. He blew his horn, waited, still nobody. That's when you gotta text them, be like, hey, I'm here, come down the thousands of steps, thanks. The replacement lighthouse keeper rode to shore and started walking up the steep set of stairs towards the lighthouse, but when he got there, he realized the door was unlocked and two of the three coats were missing. Upon further investigation, he saw the half-eaten food, 
a chair that had been tossed over and the kitchen clock had stopped. No sign of the keepers. Hmm. When checking the lighthouse log, the previous days were odd. December 12th, the second assistant, Thomas Marshall, wrote, severe winds, the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. James was awfully quiet and William the third lad was crying the whole time. Sinister vibes for sure. That's like the movie The Lighthouse in real life. That's a hard no for me, never going to this island. Next. Number two, Paviglia Island, Italy. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. When the bubonic plague arrived in 1348, the island became a quarantine colony. So if you had symptoms, you were just sent to this island to die. How horrible is that? Then again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in, and then once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard. In the 1800s, the mentally ill were sent to this island because an asylum was built. The rumor was that in the 1930s, this doctor tried crazy experiments on these patients and then he himself went crazy and then jumped from the tall bell tower. Although the tower doesn't stand anymore, his screams apparently are still heard by locals. The soil is 50% human remains as well, so if you're looking to plant some haunted aloe vera, well, there you go. And finally, number one, Fort Knox. Located in Kentucky, USA, this place really is the jackpot. The most heavily guarded place on the planet, and it's not an Egyptian pyramid. Odd. The amount of gold in here might actually be a lot more than ancient pharaohs, to be fair, so listen up. Fort Knox is home to a large amount of the United States gold reserves. Thing is, even if you work here, you're still not getting into Harry Potter's vault of treasures. Each staff member only knows part of the combination to get in, so you can't just heist your way out of lunch one day. Rumor has it, there's apparently no gold in here, but in Instead, they're studying an extraterrestrial. Another rumor is that the United States actually sold off all the gold ages ago, and they just don't want anybody to know. I weirdly vote the latter. 